So now the common the common uh, uh, thing that people say when they have this addiction, and they they keep you know like justifying themselves. The devil made me do it. It was not my fault. I just found myself doing it. I don't like it, but it's just the devil. Everything is blamed on the devil. Or they look for some, something else or somebody else to blame, and they don't take responsibilities. When you do not really take responsibility for these very addictions, it will be very difficult for you to break them. So we'll come to how later, we'll come to how we can take off these addictions. But the devil, I want you to know here that the devil and his demons cannot make you do anything. They cannot make you do anything at all. The only power Satan has now is the one we give to him. Is the one we give to him. He's, he's been stripped of the power he took from Adam. He's been stripped of that power. Jesus stripped him of that power after um uh, after the, his work on Calvary, he said it, it is finished. And he went right there to hell and took the, the, the power from Satan that he took from man originally. So that power of man that he has been using that made him to be described as the, 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 the God of this world has been taken from him. Even Jesus Christ made an, a public show of him, triumphing over him. And then he, he gave this power to us. Hallelujah. So he's been stripped of the power that he took from Adam. To whom you yield yourself, therefore, servant to obey. Servant ye are to whom you obey. So if we obey all these wives of the enemy, his suggestions, then he then takes somebody into captivity and will become his servant. God forbid. And the Bible says that we have the power, Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, that whatever we allow here on earth will be allowed in heaven. Whatever we permit here on earth will be permitted in heaven. So which means, therefore, if Satan is having any way in our lives, is because we have not really realized or we are not conscious of, of what Christ has won for us on Calvary, and we do not put the devil where he belongs. And when he knows that you do not know, he capitalizes on that ignorance and starts to do things. And when you do not have that knowledge, you will doubt. And when you doubt, Faith is gone. When faith is gone, prayer is not answered. And that's why you cannot take care of him. But I believe God tonight that your faith has been restored in Jesus' mighty name. I believe God that your power has been restored to you over the devil in the name of Jesus. Power over that addiction in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Whatever you forbid on earth is for, will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Matthew 18, 18. So now let's just quickly look at the forms of addiction, um, examples of addiction. I've mentioned some before. Some people are addicted to, to a lot of things that you don't even know is a kind of addiction. You know, some are addic addicted to TV. Some are addicted to some specific programs on TV. And uh, some are addicted to fear. Fear can be an addiction. Amen. They are addicted to fear. They, they, some people are addicted to alcohol consumption that they consume alcohol and they cannot just resist it. That compelling force, that, that obsession is there. And even though they want to stop, they keep telling them, do it from one they take. And that's why it's better not to even entangle yourself with, or touch it at all because if you don't, you might not even be able to have that moderation much later. Because some people will say, well, well I provided I'm not drunk. Provided I'm not drunk. That is not that is not the issue here because how are you going to moderate it? How, because the flesh can easily get in, can easily indulge in this things and easily get carried away. And once you do it once, twice, the flesh will keep craving for it, asking for it. Train up, just like the Bible says, train up the child the way it should go. The same way I say by the Spirit of God that you train up your body the way it should go. When it grows up, you will not depart from it. So when you train your body, in one form or in one way or the other, it gets you to it because you are doing it over and over again. And that's how habits are formed. When you do it first time, you do it second time, you third time, the fourth time, before you know it, the body adjusts to it. And once the body adjusts to it, you take the blood of Jesus Christ to be able to break it. So it's better you don't even touch it at all. Our Bible says, abstain from every appearance of evil. So alcohol consumption it can be an addiction. So people are addicted to smoking of cigarettes. And because of that, they spend a lot of money, a lot of, uh, in, in fact, their economy is wrecked because 
they are addicted to these cigarettes. You know how many, how many, how much they pay and they, they, to buy these cigarettes? A lot of fortune is spent on these addictions. I tell you, some addictions or habits can be very expensive, very expensive to maintain. So some people are addicted to worldliness. What, what does the Bible describe as worldliness? Lust of the flesh, lust of the, of the eyes, pride of life. They're addicted, so addicted to, to that. And some people are addicted to pornography. Some people are addicted to food. Uh, some people are addicted to food. You'll be surprised that food can be an addiction. They're addicted to, a, a, some, to, specific, some, to a specific kind of food. And that craving just comes. All of a sudden, they crave for it until they get it. They are not themselves. So that is what these addictions are. Because there are spirits behind them. Until the person does it, it's not okay. It's like he's sick. It's like he's going to die. But you will not actually die in the, in the long run. But because of that craving, you cannot even control it. That's what that spirit does. So food is one of, of, of the cravings that people can just get addicted to. And that's what leads to glutenin. So people are addicted to drugs or hard drugs. So hard drugs are not the only thing that people get addicted to. So people can get addicted to drugs like paracetamol. Everything, you, your body, because you use it once or twice, before you know it, your body craves for paracetamol. Any small headache, you, are, you go for paracetamol. Whereas at times, if you just sleep or drink water, you might just be okay, but you must take that paracetamol, otherwise you don't believe that that, that, that headache will go. Even what is not even necessary, there is not even uh, pain or, uh, or, or, or headache, you still take paracetamol. That is what addiction can do. See, all these four are forms of addiction. A lot of addictions that I have not mentioned, but you know what, from this you can start to think what kind of addiction you are into that you have involved yourself in. But deliverance is possible tonight in the name of Jesus. We can do without those addictions. Effects of these wrong addictions. What are the effects of wrong addictions? Effects of wrong addictions. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to 2. Amen. Behold, the hand of the Lord is not shortened that I cannot save, nor his ear heavy that I cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Praise God. So from this scripture, let's look at what, what are the possible effects of addiction. It says it, is, it can separate you from God. It can separate you from God. These wrong additions can separate you from God. That it cannot hear you. Because addictions can lead to sin. And addictions actually are weights. Weights might not necessarily be a sin. But a sin is a weight. I hope you got that. Not everything that is a weight that is a sin. This thing can weigh you down. They can reduce your, 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 your spirituality. They can slow you down. They can make you to become prayerless and all those things. They can make you to, you know, to run out of favor. But they are not sins, but some ways can lead to sin. But every sin is a weight. Praise God. So we must, we must endeavor to do without them. That's what Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and two says, especially verse one. So we should not be entangled by all this sin, the sin, and every weight. So the weight or addiction cannot does not only separate you, it weighs you down. It's a weight, it weighs you down, thereby causing you causing delay in your life or slows your progress down. That's what it can do. It's just like somebody carrying a heavy, a heavy weight or a, a sack or a bag of rice. And wants to run a race with somebody who is free of all these things. Why do you think athletes want to be as free as possible when they run? Why they run? Because they want to be light. So when you carry this load, it will hinder you from running this race, this Christian race, well, the way you should run the race. And at times, some people don't even finish their race because these addictions have cut them short and slowed them down, even stop them. But not you in the name of Jesus. So, you know, like I said earlier on, by the time you are through with those addictions, the devil comes, he's a very, very crafty person. He comes and starts condemning you again. So, this weight or addiction can lead to self condemnation. 
we bind and reject that spirit of self condemnation in Jesus' mighty name. And when that self condemnation is there, you will not be, have that confidence to, to even stand before the presence of God and pray because of that self condemnation. It enslaves. Remember the scripture I quoted earlier on to whom you, to whomever you yield yourself, servant to obey, servant he are to whom you obey. So when you obey the, these cravings, when you obey these forces that make you to do these things, then you become a servant. So it enslaves you, and that is what bondage is all about. So anybody that is addicted, so especially wrong addiction, is enslaved. In fact, even if you have right addiction, you are enslaved. So you can be a slave to righteousness or a slave to sin. So there's a, the, that is a good slave to sin, to, I mean to righteousness. But the bad one is to, to sin. So a wrong addiction can enslave you to Satan or the demonic forces responsible or enslave you to that very thing that you cannot do without it. Hallelujah. It does not only enslave or separate you from God, does not only weigh you down or cause self condemnation it can distract you from focus. It can distract you from destiny. It can distract you from what you should do. At times, because of these cravings, you are hindered or distracted from pursuing some goals you need to pursue and do things you need to do because you have been distracted by these addictions. May God deliver every one of us from wrong addictions in the name of Jesus. Now, last but on the list, how can we overcome addictions? Number one is Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 7, verse 23 to 25. NLT, Romans 7, 23 to 25. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. That was what I was saying to earlier. I told you we'll come to it. That Paul was talking about. He said, he said, there is another power within me that's at war with my mind. You see why I took that one as our main scripture for today. That we need to pull down strongholds. All these strongholds are pulled down. They are in the mind through imagination. They are there. And the enemy, when the devil is suggesting this, he suggests to your mind and it comes to you as a voice. You think it's a voice. It might not be an audible voice, but it's, it's a voice from within you as thoughts talking to you, telling you, this thing you can do. You should do it. You should do it. You should do it. You'll not be okay if you don't do it. You are going to die if you don't do it. This thing will stop you. It will just convince you in one way or the other so that give you enough reasons. Even when you want this, this what the Spirit of God is bringing some scriptures to your mind, then this, that same evil spirit will be giving you some scriptures from the Bible to portray this point. For instance, oh, somebody who's addicted to alcohol, and he say, oh, don't worry. Even Bible says that if you, if you give wine to those who want to perish, then that voice will not be telling you, ah, but he told, uh, Paul told Timothy, take a little wine for your stomach's sake. You see, you see how crafty the devil is? Even quoted to, to Jesus in the, uh, in the, on the mountain of temptation. He quoted to Jesus, the word of God. So you think the devil does not know the word of God? He also twist it. That is the, 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 the bad thing about him. He will twist the word of God. And now look at that wrong, that wrong one I is telling people now. Yeah, that word is correct, but it's wrongfully, it's using it wrongfully. It's applying it wrongfully. Take a little one for your stomach's sake. Check that context and see why he told Timothy to take little one for his stomach's sake. It was for curative purpose. It was because of the kind of sickness he had, the infirmity he had. He didn't recommend it for him to take it. Now, is that infirmity? Do you have the infirmity? Do you have the sickness? Why are you taking it? Are you now taking it for your stomach's sake? It's not supposed to be something that, is, that you continue. That's why some drugs uh, is, are recommended to you they give specification of how many weeks you should use them, and if symptom persists, come back to the doctor so that they can run another diagnosis and see what they can do. But no, when the human body gets addicted to such drugs, then you start the self recommendation. You start recommending for yourself that the way yeah, this was doing this way, I took it after it helped me, and you are taking the game. It might not be the same thing at this time around. That's why a new check needs to be done, a new diagnosis needs to be needs to be done. So why should you not take wine now? You say for your stomach sake. What is wrong with your stomach? Was it recommended by the doctor? Who recommended it? Don't even know, don't even know that self recommendation is, is, is a bad thing. You are self recommending recommend to yourself. So these are different things that they will use to deceive people into doing all these things. And they get once the body gets hooked to it, it's only the blood of Jesus Christ that can deliver. Praise God. Jesus Christ 
is the answer. Verse 24. No, verse 23 again. Uh, Romans 7, 23 to 25. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Verse 24. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life? Talking about power, to, uh, power that will save us from this addiction. How can we overcome this addiction? Paul is asking the question. And thank God he also answered the question. He said in that verse 24, What a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? The verse 25, that's what we are going to. Verse 25, he said, Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Where is the answer? In Jesus Christ, our Lord. The answer, the solution to that addiction is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, he continued, in my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, he's talking about that kind of addiction now. I am a slave to sin. Addiction makes you a slave to the wrong things. I'm a slave to sin. Praise God. So that's why, <laughs> oh my God, that's why we should engage in prayers. Prayer is another way we can overcome these addictions. Prayers, you, must, you, you should handle it in prayers. Endless prayers. Number two, in prayers. And this prayer must be made in the name of Jesus Christ. Now you know the answer is in Jesus. You make this prayer in the name of Jesus. So let me just pause a while and ask somebody who is listening to me, if you would like to give your life to Christ. Because if that addiction must leave you, it's a spiritual thing. You need a greater force, a greater power to overcome it. And that power, I tell you, is in Christ Jesus. All you need to do is believe in your heart that he is Lord and savior of your life that he can deliver you. He was crucified. He died. He's coming back again. And then you confess with your mouth that he is Lord and dedicate your life to him. I would like to lead you in this, if you will, if you wish. So you can repeat after me if you want to. Lord Jesus Christ, today I've made up my mind. I'm sorry about going my own ways before now, but I now know better. I believe in you. You, are, you, 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 you. you were crucified, you died, you were buried, you resurrected, and you come back again. So I, I dedicate my life, therefore, I commit my life to you. Please take control. I surrender and my everything I own to you. Please take control. When you come back again to rapture your church, may I be found amongst the saints to be raptured. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So I commit your children into your hands, O oh Lord, that have just uh, confessed as Lord and Savior and surrendered their lives to you. Please take over their lives, take control, take charge. Even those addictions, oh God, uh, I pray that you remove those addictions. You say, oh, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. You said you have a yoke that you, you replace, you used to re you will use to replace that heavy yoke and that heavy burden. So Father, your yoke is easy, your burden is light. Give them of that easy yoke and that light burden so that you'll be able to do away with all this heavy burden and this heavy yoke of addiction in the name of Jesus. Not only addiction, everything in their lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I dedicate them, therefore, to your hands, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Congratulations, beloved. So, we'll continue now, now that we are all on the same platform, by the grace of God. So, through prayers, we pray in the name of Jesus. Like I just prayed, he said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. God, Jesus Christ will give you rest from that addiction tonight in the name of Jesus. And that addiction will not come a second time in Jesus' mighty name. Once well, Jesus Christ removes it, provided you, you remain in Christ. So when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Philippians 2.10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Mark 16, 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. In my name, they shall cast out devils. There's a devil behind that addiction. There's a devil behind that obsession. Command that devil. This obsession is 
is of the devil, is, is, is sensual, is from the pit of hell. So you rebuke that spirit behind it. And it will go in the name of Jesus. We've got the power. We've got the, provided we believe, he said, these signs will follow us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And that we can deal with this uh, um, bad habit or wrong addictions is through the word of God. It's not by power, it's not by mind. We need the word of God. In fact, John chapter 1 from verse 1 says, tells us that Jesus Christ is the word of God. Is the word of God. The express idea of, of God. Is the word of God. So, if we are talking about studying the word, we're talking about studying Jesus Christ, knowing him as Lord and Savior, talking about the scriptures, studying the scriptures, believing the scriptures, confessing the scriptures, speaking the scriptures, and acting upon the scriptures. When you speak the word of God to those addictions, not your own words, the word of God to those addictions, they'll hear you. They have ears. They have ears. They are spirit beings. They have ears. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4.12 but the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the spirit and, and, and soul and of the joints and marrow and a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So the word of God can penetrate and pierce to, down to the heart and be able to circumcise and cut off, in quote, spiritually speaking, remove that very, that very seed, that very seed of addiction, that very source of addiction, it will remove them, cut it off from you, and then you become a brand new person in the name of Jesus. So, the word of God is very necessary. I don't know how the word of God is going to be, but you just believe in the word of God, believe in the word of God, confess the word of God, speak the word of God, and act upon the word of God. The more you read the word of God, the closer you are to Christ, the more darkness Addiction is darkness. The more darkness will flee from you in the name of Jesus. So don't concentrate on that addiction anymore. Don't be obsessed with thinking about other addiction. Don't be crying over that addiction. Crying will not solve it. What you should do is not to have self condemnation, but to just believe in God, study the word of God, and continue to pray in the name of Jesus. But when you pray, number four, do it by faith. Do it by faith. Romans 4.21 and being fully convinced that he had promised, he was also able to perform. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and I say the word of those who diligently seek him. So we must do it by faith. We are convinced that as long as he has promised you, he is able to perform it. God is able, we have established from the scriptures that Jesus Christ is the answer. And is able to do it. So he will never fail. He will never disappoint you. But you must be fully convinced within yourself. You must have that consciousness and that belief and strong persuasion within you that he can do it and that he will do it for you. God does not so don't segregate. He's not a partial God. He will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Number fifth way we can deal with addiction is by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4 6 says, not by power, not by my Zechariah. Amen. So, there's no mountain we go to stand before Zerubbabel or before you because you have the, 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 the you have Jesus Christ living in you, dwelling in you. Therefore, no mountain will be able to succumb you, no mountain will be able to overpower you, overpower you, no mountain will be able to resist you all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. No, that, that addiction is not a mountain we are referring to. Is that, that mountain is a problem. And the problem we are talking about here is the addiction. No addiction will be able to withstand the power of God that is in you in the name of Jesus. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, we learn, for it is God which walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So we need the Spirit of God to help us to do and will of his good pleasure. So anything that will make us to do the will of God is actually the person that will help us to do the will of God is the Holy Spirit. And when we do the will of God, we are not doing the will of the devil. When we do the will of the devil, we are not doing the will of God. They are variants. They are contrary to one another. So when you are obeying God, you are disobeying the devil. When you are disobeying, uh, when you are disobeying God, you are obeying the devil. That's how it is. It can be two ways. Anyone that is dull minded cannot, cannot, cannot stand before God. And dull mindedness will keep you from away from answer, your prayers being answered. Hallelujah. So, for it is God who makes us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. 
So if we must do of his good pleasure, we need the spirit of God. And when we are doing his good pleasure, it means that we are not doing that of, the, of Satan. Remember with the scripture we quoted that whoever you obey, you become that servant of that person. So when you now obey God, you become the servant of God and you will no longer be the servant of the devil. Praise God. So the best thing is now concentrate yourself and commit yourself to obeying God. Don't be so conscious of this addition anymore. Don't lament or condemn yourself anymore. All you should be doing now is serve God, believe in Him, obey Him. And before you know it, that, that power of that sin, that power of that addition will be destroyed in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, number six, lay aside every weight and sin. Lay aside every weight and sin. Lay aside every weight and sin. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has uh, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I will stop it there for now. Uh, next time we will we'll look at uh, other ways we can deal with this uh, addiction. But I just want us to pray. These addictions, we've mentioned a lot of addictions. What, what are the forms of addictions that you have? Think about it. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Add the Holy Spirit right now. As the Holy Spirit, reveal to me the addictions in my life, that the wrong addictions in my life. But at times, except the Holy Spirit, you might think that addiction is not a problem. You might not even know it's an addiction or a wrong addiction. So just pray, say, Holy Spirit of God, reveal to me. Like we said earlier on, you need the Holy Spirit to help you. The Holy Spirit of God revealed to me the addictions, the wrong addictions in my life. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Reveal these addictions to me. Give me the grace to overcome them. Oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Masentebos kantaya kotoya kasandoya. Ribo santa bosontobos kantaba skontoya. Yebo rakate kasanto boya kata ozente barakato ya kasando yaba. Ye barakato kasanto ya. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. This time around, I want you to begin to mention those addictions by name. Is it, is it fear? Is it uh, alcohol consumption? Is it cigarette? We know that when we pray in the name of Jesus, like we have just mentioned, we pray in the name of Jesus, these things can be dealt with. We can bind them and whatever we command to go, we go. Anything we command and decree to go, we go. If we don't permit them, they will not, they will not be able to survive in our life. They can't take domino, they cannot have dominion over us anymore because Christ has won this battle for us. All we need to do now is to disallow them through our proclamation in the name of Jesus. So begin to decree, command them to live your life in the name of Jesus. Let them know that you belong to Jesus Christ. They have no more hold on you. They have no place in your life. Mention those addictions by name and begin to bind them in the name of Jesus. Command them. Thou shalt also decree thee and shall be established unto you. Command them to give way in the name of Jesus. Addiction to worldliness, addiction to pornography, addiction to food, addiction to drugs or hard drugs, addiction to, to people or certain people, addiction. Let's command these addictions to live. Whatever addiction that is in your life, addiction to money, whatever addiction it is, command them to bow and lose their hold and your grip and their grip from your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They have no hold on you anymore. They shouldn't because you are of Christ. You are of Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Break that power of slavery. Break that power of destruction. Break that power of, of, of the enemy of self-condemnation from your life in the name of Jesus. Command the foul spirit to lose his hold and grip from your mind. Set your mind loose and free in the name of Jesus. All these strongholds, they are in the mind. The battle, the major battle is in the mind. So let's begin to set our minds loose and free. Set your mind loose. Saturate your mind with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse your mind. Declutter your mind with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
in the name of Jesus. Just begin to declare and declare. I flush my mind. I break my mind. I cleanse my mind with the blood of Jesus Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. This mind of Christ cannot entertain any addiction, any form of addiction or obsession in the name of Jesus. I reject every form of obsession, every form of craving that is evil, evil cravings, negative cravings, wrong cravings, I reject in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Masente borakata ozente baraka tobo sandaya yeke baraka tobo shaka ozente baraka toya zeba osonto ya kasanto ya kasoto ya in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Begin to bind that force. That force. You know since they come and from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence. Only his violence takes it by force. Talking about spiritual violence. And there's that demonic power that is compelling you, that is compelling your son, that is compelling your daughter into doing one thing or the other that is wrongful. And, and then they, they made a practice of this. It's like their second nature now. That was not how God created them. So you can stand in the gap on behalf of your children. You can stand in the gap on behalf of your spouse. You can stand in the gap on behalf of your brother or sister or even your neighbor. Begin to set them free in the name of Jesus. And from that spirit of that pressure, that, that whether it's peer pressure or pressure from within them or, or whatever is making them do those things that, that are not right, let's begin to bind that spirit and rebuke it from their lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every evil force, right from within or from outside, that is trying to obsess them, to possess them, and make them to keep doing this wrong thing, bind that evil spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Masunto ibos kantaba sunduya. Yebo santaba skuntoya. Meleke baraka tobos kanda. Yebo rakata mosunto ya kasantoya. Moleke kataya basuntoya. Maleke baraka to kasantaya. Ike santa ya kosuntoya. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's take authority and dominion over wrong appetites. Wrong appetite. Or all these wrong passions, inordinate affection. Begin to bind them or prove them right now. Whatever, whatever kind of hunger that you have that is not that is that is negative, that hunger and passion, that desire and that appetite for those things that are wrong, begin to command them to lose their hosts and your grief from your life, from your family, from your children, from everyone around you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mapole Casanto Roboscanta is a K Baraka Toboya. Yebo Santaya Katoya Katai, Ibo Santaya Basunto Ibo Santa. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, beloved, you will not die. You will not die. You cannot die. You will not die if you do not, if you do not eat that thing. If you do not drink that thing. If you do not smoke that thing. If you do not consume that thing. If you don't do that thing, you will not die. You will not die. Don't believe the devil. You will not die. Be pray for God that God will give you the strength and the grace to resist that, that spirit. Of addiction, whatever that addiction is, the spirit behind it. Pray that God give you the grace. Receive the grace right now and decree and convince your spirit that you have the grace to resist that temptation in the name of Jesus. Begin to decree it, proclaim it. I have the grace, I have the power to resist. I resist you. I resist you by the blood of Jesus Christ. I resist you by the blood of Jesus Christ. I resist you by the blood of Jesus Christ. You spirit of you spirit of uh, 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 whatever spirit it is, uh, I resist you in the material spirit of gluttony, it was, uh, the appetite for food, or uh, uh, necessarily, uh, 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 I was excess appetite for food, I reject you, the spirit of gluttony, uh, Cassandra, Boscanta, command whatever it is, uh, Kamashike, command to lose his hold and his grip from your life right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Marebosha is a K Cassandra. Ozente Baraka Tobosanda in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Every form of habit and addiction that is costing you so much money that every if you can sit down and just calculate, you discover that you spend so much money on that appetite, on that addiction, and it's worthless to you. That addiction is unprofitable to you, it's unproductive. Yet you spend so much money on it, money you have spent. Doing something else that will yield forth better results and good things into your life. 
you are spending it on that addiction that is profitless. So begin to bind that addiction. If how much do you spend on alcohol? How much do you spend? At times you might just think it's nothing until you calculate over time how much you really spend on those things and what has they what, what have they brought to your life? Only momentary, momentary pleasure. Well, and then you are losing so much. So begin to pray right now. Every every unprofitable uh, habit, every worthless habit, unproductive habit, uh, I receive grace uh, to, to overcome you in Jesus' name. Amen. I command you to bow from my life. You cannot have dominion over this body of mine. You, I kashe kebora kataya sotoya ribo santaya. You have no dominion over this body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Santoya ba santoya. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be thy name, O God. Glory be to your name. Jesus, you are worthy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I commit your children into your hands, O God. Anyone and everyone, O God, that is addicted to one thing or the other. Is it is it television they are addicted to? Is it uh, uh, Whatever it is, oh God, that they are addicted to, what the music, whatever is unprofitable that they are addicted to, that is distracting them, that is enslaving them, that is separating them from you, that is separating them from your word, that is separating them from, from excelling and doing great fit for great achieving great fit for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, that 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 passion, I mean wrong passion, that wrong craving that is weighing them down slowing down their progress in life, that is entangling them and even causing them self-condemnation. I command those forces to lose their hold and their grip from your children now in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare, you boy, you girl, you man, you woman, Jesus Christ has set you free and you are free indeed in the name of Jesus. You are free, you are free, you are free from that addiction. I set you free in the name of Jesus. I decree your divine release from the force and the power behind that addiction in the name of Jesus. Every wrong craving, bad habit that is unprofitable to your life, may they die right now in your life. May they dry up from the root in Jesus' mighty name. I set you free in Jesus' mighty name. I set your mind free. I cleanse your mind with the blood of Jesus Christ. I decree the divine release of that mind from the grip of the wicked from the grip of this addiction, every evil spirit responsible that is compelling you and making you do these things that you should not do, I command them to bow now in the name of Jesus. I destroy their strongholds and their power from your life in Jesus' name. I pull their strongholds down, destroy their strongholds. I set their strongholds on fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Basantoya, Basantoya. Father, therefore, I commit your children as many as are willing and ready to overcome these addictions, I commend them to your hands to know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Time is up, beloved, because we have some uh, hitches at the beginning. But by God's grace, I believe things will be better next week. Next week, Thursday. God bless you. Thanks for your patience. And thank you for being part of this uh, broadcast today. I pray that the mighty hand of God that has kept you this patient will continue to uphold his, 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 his name in your life and defend you every day, every night. He'll protect you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and all that belong to your children, your family, your business, the God Almighty with the blood of Jesus Christ and by his word protect everything for you. His angels with their flaming source of fire will watch over you day and night and watch over your family in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you. God bless you.